The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach to go, dear friends, as always, we meet here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. As we start off yet another trading afternoon, we look at the S&P, and of course, uh, we're off about three points, uh, not very much off the low, about two and a half points off the S&P low of the day. My guess is we're going to continue to fade uh, into tomorrow morning's uh, uh, discussions, and my guess is that we're going to get a whole lot of nothing, and this is just going to continue. Uh, this market has, for a long time, looked like it wanted to pull back to the 2120 level on the S&P cash. At that point, we'll find out whether or not this is just a mild pullback or one of the best ways to get everybody bullish, only to uh, eh, kind of do a little three-card money and sneak everybody off the opposite side. Uh, one of my... Uh, Mentors was a man named, uh, is still a man named Tim Ord. He uh, had one thing said with me that really stuck with me coming into the uh, lows of 2003 and four. He said that, uh, guess what? No one's going to want to buy this. The volume's going to be light. And if you use traditional Wyckoff methods, you would never buy it because you'd just say, hey, that's it. He said the same thing is true at highs, and that is that you'll see people that will never believe it. Sometimes you just get an automatic reversal at the high, and that's it. But uh, many times, uh, like 2008, you'll see a no-volume high, and sometimes it even goes a little further. But uh, there's, you know, you want to see volume almost all the time uh, off the top. But uh, if it's a long-term top, Guess what? No one believes it, so no one really starts shorting. There isn't a lot of volume off, and guess what? The volume doesn't come till much later. Um, that was a little bit of the case in 2008. It was a huge part of the case when we were down at the S&P. What, a 268 was the low, but I think the buy was right around 289 on the S&P, or excuse me, uh, 789 and 750. It's, uh, yeah. 769, but I think it was about 789 on the S&P cash. Um, and it, the S&P went up to almost about 1,100 before any volume really came back in. So just a little parable out there. Uh, if we do start coming down with some volume, but do not bounce. Do not be surprised if we get some volume. And uh, that is going to be the, uh, the, and uh, uh, that correction, what am I trying to think of? That will be the conviction is when volume comes in, but it comes in much later than almost all the other times in major moves in the market. So we don't have a lot of volume uh, today either, starting off the day with about 1.8 billion shares. But if this is going to be something bigger, something larger, uh, let's say, uh, as I've said before, I think we're already uh, in a recession. Uh, I think there's a lot of things going on uh, behind the scenes in the government to mask various parts of it. Uh, but we'll talk more about that today and, uh, and maybe some a couple more signs that I've seen that make me think that at least uh, recession is setting in uh, around the world. Uh, as always, we like to start off uh, this uh, show with a little bit of history, because, of course, uh, if you do not know your history, you are doomed to repeat it. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. 
On this day in 2000, Internet Wire, a, price, a press release service, issues a bulletin stating the Securities and Exchange Commission is investigating Emulex on accounting practices. In 16 minutes, the stock sheds $2.2 billion in market value. It later turns out that the press release was a fabrication by the former Internet a Wire employee who short sold the stock. He pockets $241,000 while thousands of investors lose their shirt, locking in at least $110 million of losses by selling on the news. Two weeks later, the SEC nails the con artist Mark Jacob for security fraud. He did, I think, about three and a half or four years. No, uh, I'd like to catch up to him and see what he's doing now. But uh, what do we know about this? Uh, this has not happened once. It's happened many times. Uh, if you see something that's probably way too uh, good to be true, uh, if you're short, you kind of probably want to scratch your head. Some of these things are true, uh, but uh, there is one thing that you want to do when you see these now. Before you click the button and sell, turn on the, uh, the news, at least the financial news. Almost all of the financial news, uh, major news outlets now have the CEO and the CFO's home phone number. And before they run with the story, they're going to call them. And here's how that worked in 2000, uh, that uh, calling them was a formality. If they didn't answer, no big deal. Well, Emulex, a lot of these other companies, when these phony press releases go out, they were all one of several things, but they were all people that were on the Pacific time zone. So no one was awake. No one was uh, around. In fact, I've seen several of these on companies that are over in Asia where everybody, you know, it's two in the morning over there when press releases come out and no one gets out of bed. But uh, you don't see a great deal many uh, of these anymore because of that. Uh, and there is a bat phone, kind of like the red phone on the, on the uh, president's desk to call the Ruskies if anything bad happens. Uh, but uh, it, it still happens from time to time. Find, people still find ways to uh, put rumors out there. But uh, uh, I actually participated in one about four years later. Uh, and I can't remember what company it was now. It's another Internet company. And uh, it got hammered. Uh, the amazing thing is these companies that got hammered continued to sell off. And guess what? They never recovered off of getting hammered. Of course, this one, you know, in 2000 was one issue. But the, the one in 2004, the same thing. It just seemed no one wanted to have anything to do with it, uh, even though the, there was nothing wrong with it. And it took years and years for that one from 2004. Because I was short it, actually. I just happened to be short it. And they wiped all the sales. So I didn't make any money on the deal. But I did happen to be short. But uh, just stayed short. Uh, because of what happened in 2000, and it continued to sell off for the next six months in 2004. Uh, other things of interest out here, uh, there is no uh, breakfast for Tiffany out there. And uh, do I have that? Oh, we're going to break. We'll come back. Talk more about this. But, uh, TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we were talking about uh, China. I've been talking about anecdotal evidence for a while. I don't believe any of the numbers that the Chinese give out. But um, kind of interesting to see at least Tiffany's. It's doing better. It's up 7% today. Uh, but to in their uh, discussions, they said the global environment continues to reflect well-known challenges that we believe have broad effects on spending by local customers as well as foreign tourists, especially from China. Uh, they do a lot of business uh, from selling jewelry, especially in New York and uh, L.A., uh, to uh, Chinese that visit over here. Uh, but he said even the sales they have directly over in China are also down significantly, 20, 25 percent. We've talked about some of the other ones, including movies, down 20 percent. It really looks to me like uh, uh, if uh, they wore belts over in China, uh, they are uh, pulling them in a bit, just like Steve Rhodes. But uh, that's it. Uh, tell on consumers, I think so. And, of course, uh, a great song, Breakfast and Tiffany's. It's going to play it, but i played it too many times. Other things going on, Dollar Tree and Dollar General, snap. Some uh, states changed in April the criteria for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, otherwise known as food stamps, formerly known as food stamps, still known as food stamps to me, making thousands of households ineligible for benefits, retail food deflation, and a reduction of both SNAP participation rates and benefit levels coupled with unseasonably mild weather proved to be stronger than expected headwinds for our business, said Chief Executive Todd Vass off in a statement. I think he's from Dollar Tree. But uh, basically both Dollar Tree, Dollar General said the exact same thing. We'll look at charts later, but uh, Dollar General off 17%, uh, Dollar Tree off 9% today. So that gives you a great... Uh, look into that part of the business. After the bell tonight, we've got Autodesk, GameStop, Splunk, and Ultra Salon. I think I spelled that wrong. L-T-U-R-L. Is it Ultra? No, not Ultra. R-O-L-T-R-A. There we go. Ultra Salon. 
Uh, that thing's been a rocket. Uh, we'll get a chance. We'll look at those today. Uh, in the morning, we've got big lots. Uh, probably that I, they kind of have a little bit of food business, but not a lot. So it'll be interesting to see the difference between them and Dollar General on what's going on. And that's pretty much it. Uh, as yesterday, I appreciated all the phone calls. We got plenty of time today. Probably not a bad day to give me some more phone calls out here at 877-927-6648. And uh, we'll get to some other ones. Uh, see what is moving out here along with the uh, markets, which are already in progress. We're about one point off the low of the day on the S&P cash, volume 1.9 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. Uh, so as we're going out here, and of course, IBB, why don't we look at that first, because it looks like, to me, it's already broken uh, already today. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're through the lows of the day again, uh, 282.55. As we started on Monday, you just, these things, at least this one, to me, was one of the most predictable moves in a while, and that was just uh, the wind-up on Monday, uh, the delivery on Tuesday, the uh, everybody checking out on Wednesday, and uh, the late to the party people figuring out that maybe uh, trying to buy the IBB uh, on a pullback here, probably not the smartest thing. Uh, CNBC, I haven't spent a lot of time watching it today, but every time I look, it's another Mylan Pharmaceutical article, uh, and... Uh, Oh, I looked over again. Guess what? Myelin Pharmaceutical turns negative is the headline on CNBC now. So uh, not a whole lot to say other than that. I mean, you had a, some pretty good signals out here that the IBB was getting ready to, to turn. And uh, I don't know what else you can say about it other than that. Uh, 240 looks rather uh, interesting. We've got to make it through about 277 first. But my guess is that we're there by the close of business tomorrow. We're close enough that it's uh, we're going to get back to this gap that happened on the 21st of uh, July. And let's see if there's anything else here to look at uh, on this. Um, you know, you had a lot of people or more people shorting, but it wasn't that bad yesterday on the IBB. I wrote about this in my newsletter this morning. It continues to make me think that uh, while we're having a few more shorts, uh, nothing comes out here that tells me that we're in that uh, area of about 30% uh, short initiations on a daily basis uh, to say that uh, everybody and their dog is now as bearish as can be and is really a good time to buy. So uh, I'll let you know when that does happen. Uh, to, to, what else do we have going on out here? To, to go back to some of these other ones. Let's go to Dollar General first. Da, 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 da. You know, these, I, w I would have thought, had a good opportunity to set up for a three-gap play. You had two gaps to the upside. You basically filled both of those by the uh, trading today in Dollar General. Um, a lot of people saw this coming. I think they just, in fact, there's a lot of these stocks that are like that. I think you can make a case that the IBB was that, and that was that they ran it one more time up there. Um, Dollar General looked like it had been getting weaker and weaker for a while. What you really didn't like about uh, Dollar General uh, on here is the energy between this uh, May 18th to uh, July 27th high. Uh, the energy really was about 60% uh, of the move off the bottom of February 11th low to the April 1st low. You had a ton of energy, you had a big day. Um, you did have some di nice buying signals out here. But uh, again, so many of these stocks just going sideways look to me like distribution as we've spoken about for the last week, week and a half. Dollar Tree, little less violent and of course uh, down a little less just nine percent on this one uh this one looks like probably about 82 to 81 would be where you're looking at there's a couple of gaps right at 80 and one at 81 and then this big gap that happened on the 25th of may but you know how i'm partial to these double gap areas as layers of uh 
where you will find very good support. So that comes in at about 81 and a half. Uh, and then the other one, let's call it 79.50 to 80 bucks. Uh, so there are two gaps in that larger gap. Uh, if you can't, eh, maybe you can see it, maybe you can on Tiger TV. Let me zoom in just a little bit closer out here. Um, you should see them. And they're not big gaps, but for some reason, it just seems like double gaps, uh, gaps within gaps that have not filled tend to be pretty good layers of support. Um, HP guided down, uh, everybody buying it back anyway. One of these stocks that I think a lot of people are really thinking uh, really good management on it. You know, are the, they complain that their printer sales are down, but uh, didn't seem to have bothered too many people out here. Uh, it opened much lower, not much of a change now. Um, I think they think that uh, still kind of a decent company. Mm, I'm not gonna buy it. Yeah, looks interesting. We'll be back after this break. Make, it, make sure and give me a call. Oh, we got one. We'll get it one on the opposite side. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, Charlie in Omaha called, and he wanted to look at True Car. wasn't able to hold that long. Uh, you know, you had a break. It did go higher with vo uh, volume. Uh, unfortunately, it came right back into the trading range. What I dislike about this one was that you had all the energy in the world from August 24th, 2015, up to this December 30th high. You had a lot of energy, a 4.6 on my power law vector indicator number on the May 9th. 
uh, to the August 9th run, you only had about a three on it. So at about 65% of the energy from that uh, move from last year. And that's what, you know, a great deal of these stocks have been like. You know, you've got some days where there's some decent volume out here and some tests of some lows. But um, as far as I can tell, this uh, 442 from February 24th is a high volume low that has been untested. And you probably have a trading range around here from about 10 bucks to this 442. I don't see a whole lot else in it. Uh, to, to do what else do we have? Uh, okay, Chromebook, thank me. Anything else? Uh, you can email me also at path at tfnn.com. Uh, everybody knows what I've thought about solar companies out here. Jinko Solar, the Chinese company, down on some decent volume today. Um, looks like it's coming back to the February 11th low. There's a when we talk about gaps, this one's got a gap inside a gap inside a gap gap. Uh, and these gaps go back. I mean, there's, it could even go back. This thing goes back maybe a few years. Um, and this gap, you know, now that you can see these things in the art of timing the trade charts uh, is kind of a good example of why I wrote this very specifically and the way it handles gaps. You can go back and see the original gaps. A lot of times, these gaps are not big or uh, have a huge volume. This one actually had a little bit uh, comparatively to the other days around it. Uh, but you get a gap. Then you get yet another gap out here. The next time it gaps is on the, uh, what is that, uh, August 25th uh, of 2015. So you, now you got a gap inside a gap. Then you gap up and gap down the next day. Uh, that's on the 25th. You get down on the 24th. Uh, all these gaps end up being right here at this uh, uh, level. Uh, and then, of course, you gap another time uh, back here on February 11th. So this thing just keeps adding gaps and adding gaps around this level. My guess is this thing is building cause to go, and it's going to run right through all these gaps um, and never touch it again. Uh, the way these things generally set up. So I would watch this. Uh, don't know exactly when it's going to be. My guess is there's going to be some kind of bad news. Oil prices are going to go down. Something's going to happen. This thing's just going to probably jump from this uh, $17, $18 range right to 14 bucks. my thought. Maybe even lower. There'll be some bad news in that one someday. It's setting up that way anyway. Uh, Medtronic, uh, of course, all these... Uh, medical stocks or pharma or bio are all kind of under a cloud today. Um, this one's down. Not a whole lot of volume out here, so I'm not going to make a big deal about it. Uh, Michael's, uh, the craft uh, store, has come back and filled its gap out here today. This is one of the better-looking ones uh, of the day. Uh, on March 17th, to do, what do we, can we say, uh, this gapped up with... 5.3 million shares. You came back into it with 1.8 today so far. So not too bad. Maybe everybody's going to be doing uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, scrapbooking come this fall. They sell all that kind of weird crap that ladies like to buy. Uh, Myelin Pharmaceuticals, uh, this one, man, they, were they pushing it uh, on uh, the PR front this morning and all day? It kind of got uh, into about 11 o'clock, and the uh, eh, most of the people thought uh, it was a little overdone uh, for the push. It's now headed back down to the lows of the day. And, of course, this is all about their EpiPen thing we talked about on Monday. Um, you know, the news, a lot of times uh, there's nothing into it, but uh, I always loved G uh, Steve Jobs' uh, address to Stanford where he talks about connecting the dots backwards. We talk about history a lot. And, of course, what happened the last time this happened? And why should anything different happen this time? Um, and uh, so we kind of talked about that on Monday, uh, especially in the last uh, quarter of uh, the presidential race. Uh, did, could anything uh, different happened out here? Eh, hard to think of it. Uh, what else is going on? Netflix was upgraded today. I don't see a great deal happening on this one other than 
if I was going to short this thing, <laughs> this is about where you'd want to pull the trigger. The same gap down on earnings back on the 19th of uh, July, 50, call it 56 million shares. Uh, got into it with uh, 17 million shares on the 5th of August. And, of course, today we're into it with the 9 million shares. Um, this one always is perpetually short. I probably would like to see this thing hit 99, but, man, is it close. Uh, if you were going to pull the trigger on this thing, definitely danger close. The only thing I can say is that uh, uh, you can make some cases – that this might actually make up to the 104 gap one more time just because so many people are short it. And that's why yeah, I think there's a lot of lower hanging fruit out there other than Netflix. So uh, I'm not going to be chasing it down there. C-Drill came out with uh, earnings today. Uh, these offshore guys, uh, yeah, they clearly can't get out of their way. Uh, but the chart doesn't look all that bad. And earnings out today... You know, we've got about 7 million shares. You wanted to, to see that volume stay low. But on a Wyckoff pattern out here, this is not all this bad. Uh, but you want this thing probably to base out above, let's say, $2.25 uh, for a while. And if you could do that, you know, maybe a month or so, um, maybe, you know, maybe something's happening in crude <laughs> that I don't see at the moment. Sears Holdings, we've talked about these stocks being the living dead stocks. Uh, this one looks like it's about ready to go under. But uh, so did the shark in Jaws. They had to put three barrels in it. Uh, Sears is going down. It's just very hard to tell, uh, looking at the books, how much money they have left. Uh, all their stores are starting to be, uh, it looked like the living dead. You know, people with, uh, you know, one eye and half their teeth. Not a lot of quality employees at Sears last time I was in there. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know what else you can say about it. Uh, but uh, just like uh, uh, BlackBerry, Radio Shack, uh, and others, these things, if they're done right, they can keep these things going sideways for months and years as uh, the biggest holders uh, sell off any to unsuspecting morons um, that they can, uh, you know, sometimes there are reasons for these things to come back. I can't think of a one for Sears. I couldn't think of any for Radio Shack and I can't think of any for Blackberry either. Um, sometimes you just lose your mojo and that's it. Tech data. When we come back, uh, nice move on that. We will uh, get to it. Got some emails for some charts to look at, um, tech data down and uh, that's not good for the tech industry. We'll tell you why and get the rest of the story when we come back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Well, I am leaving on vacation tomorrow, uh, so I uh, won't see you tomorrow. I'll be back the 7th of September, and uh, all my newsletter readers will still get their newsletters. Uh, the only difference is I don't do the radio show, which takes up a, a, an ordinate amount of time, you'd think, for just one hour. Uh, but uh, I won't be seeing you. I was going to go uh, sailing, but the hurricane has put the nicks on that, so I'm going to a computer code camp, I think. But we'll have to find out. Still trying to put my plans together on the ill-time hurricane coming up here. Uh, but I will be long gone by the time that thing gets up here on Sunday. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Let's check in with Mr. Market for just a second. Uh, well, we're still out here at 2172. So we're off uh, two and a half, three points. Uh, volume is at just 2 billion shares. So volume does remain light. Uh, we're still looking at pretty much the lows of the day on the IBB and the rest of the stuff. Eh, not moving that much. So I can't get too excited on it. Uh, but yeah, we're. It's nickel and diming the IBBs down here at the bottom. Why uh, yet another senator speaks about uh, this. And it kind of reminds me of the parable of finding new ways to kick a dead horse. Uh, not a lot going to change in the next two weeks on that until they are able to stand up in uh, Congress and uh, shake and wag their fingers at uh, Milan. Uh, but uh, that's it. Anyway, we're talking about tech data. It was off fairly strongly today. Uh I don't see anything else that changes uh, my view of uh, at least much of uh, Silicon Valley having some downside. They're just about the people that are building smartphones are about the only people doing some business. And uh, that's really kind of hurt tech data. They kind of fell a little bit on HP news is too, that they're in a lot of business and selling printers and additional peripherals right now. Uh, everybody is cutting back probably until after the election. I think that's kind of the recession we're in right now. I'll call it the electoral recession. That is, no one wants to do anything until they see who is uh, uh, winning or they think that they know who's going to win. I looked at the polls last night. Very interesting to see um, that the polls are probably worthless uh, from what I can tell. There's about 20% that almost all the different pollsters have together on people that are, quote, quote, undecided. Uh, but uh, most of them are way oversampled on one political party. Uh, that's always uh, a reason to be nervous uh, and believe the polls. Not saying they're going one way or the other. I'm just saying they're probably, the polls 
aren't worth a lot right now. And there's historically that's pretty true. Normally the polls in the market, uh, if they are going to move, depending on who's going to become president or there's going to be a, a change in the Senate and the, and the Congress uh, for uh, who runs the show there, uh, that really doesn't come in until about the 10th of September when uh, people start thinking who and, and actually deciding that 20 percent that's always undecided decides which way to fall. So wouldn't put a lot of stock into it at the same time. I don't think we're going to see uh, anybody really make any hard decisions until at least the first or maybe even second week of September to see which way the wind's going to blow. Anyway, tech data down, uh, not a lot of volume. Um, and, of course, uh, just about everything we've looked at lately in this, uh, if you're uh, the uh, steel case or uh, Herman, uh, what is it, Miller Furniture, all the other people that uh, put together offices, their business is all going to be kind of down uh, all the way through probably November. So don't look for a lot of hiring and that kind of stuff going on. Uh, Tiffany's, we talked about this one, uh, actually up mostly on U.S. business, though, uh, and right up to the previous highs. We pierced it but can't break through it. So that's very interesting. Uh, Workday uh, had a nice day. I really like this company, um, and fortunately this thing is at the – uh, line of resistance. Never got a good test of this February 9th low at 47.32, and I I hope the day comes that I get that 47.32 tested on very light volume, and I can buy this stock and hold it for a long time. I love, I, I don't spend much time telling people that I love the CEOs or the CFOs or the management of a particular company, but uh, this these guys are pretty, pretty sharp guys. Uh, and uh, William Sonoma, somebody asked if they needed yet another egg beater yesterday in the den or something, and didn't really know. This one, of course, spiked up to 57.40 today. A lot of volume, wasn't able to even hold the previous July 13th high. That's got to start uh, making you wonder a little bit out here about what's going on in the broader market. Uh, probably still be coming back. Uh, do, 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 what else do we have going on out here? Uh, okay. Well, those are the ones that uh, we wanted to get to with earnings. Let's get to the ones with some tests that I've been talking about in my daily newsletter. Wanted to see if anything was going on in these. Again, you can give me a call. Um, <laughs> uh, da, 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 just looking through the den. Okay. Nothing going on. Minus 360, 6.30. Ticks, thanks for calling that out in the den, by the way. Uh, we're at the lows of the, eh, not, a, not quite there. 21.71. Uh, just a stone's throw from the low of the day. But uh, there'll be, it looks like we've got these people that kind of just want to buy these lows uh, time after time. It, I, I think it's going to be like la uh, yesterday. We're going to see that last 30, 45 minutes of the day really give us the decision about which way these markets are going. And right now it's uh, kind of blowing wind one way or the other. Uh, Canadian Pacific out here uh, hitting its previous high. Um, the energy wasn't all that uh, light coming up off this June 27th low. So I probably wouldn't be pulling the trigger short on this. Again, there's some stocks out there that have much lighter movements up on uh, this last leg that I'll be looking at. Certainly volume up to these highs, uh, not all that exciting. If you even go back and look at the volume on uh, July 20th, this had 1.9 million shares, still 400,000 short of that April 22nd high. EMC, man, it looks like this deal may come together with Dell. I've never understood it. I think it's stupid, uh, but uh, they've done stupid stuff before. But man, very light volume back up at that top. Uh, General Dynamics, uh, always love these uh, uh, defense companies. A uh, little lighter volume out here, but this thing hasn't really pulled back and actually done fairly well on a pullback of the last couple of days. Hasn't really shown that much weakness. Energy off this last low is okay. Again, I think that there are better and lower hanging fruit out here. Uh, for stocks that look like maybe uh, they could tank, 
uh, GoGo, which is the company that provides wireless uh, on uh, Wi-Fi wi on airlines, uh, got pretty cocky, been slapped around a little bit. I don't see anything that truly changes uh, the outlook for this company, i.e. going belly up. Um, light volume back up here in the $12 range, you know, much lighter than the 4.9 million shares uh, going back to uh, March 4th. And of course, the huge gap down on the 16th of February. Anyway, we'll be back for the home stretch for Tom O'Brien and then Andy Heck. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And oh, you're looking at GoGo. Eh, it just looks to me, this is a company... Now, I did have a nice test of the low on very light volume. Um, I almost pulled the trigger on this one, uh, but I did not. Uh, 790 back here on February 16th with 20 million shares. Test it with 1.5 million shares. Uh, I kept on thinking, you know, I'm going to buy it back here in the sideways moving. And uh, I don't know, someone waved their keys in front of me and jangled them and you got to, you, you, that's one of the things in trading out here. You got to keep focus. And I'll uh, kind of kick myself because that one good looking chart and that sideways action told you that someone was uh, out here uh, accumulating this stock. But uh, this is probably everything that you could look to get out of that one. To do, 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 what else did we have uh, going on out here? The Mosaic Company. Uh, 
Man, are these uh, companies in the potash business uh, and some of the other businesses really winding up some energy. Um, I don't know which one this is going to break. I'll probably fade whatever the first direction is. But, man, are these things uh, going back to March 7th uh, in a tight trading range. These things look like they're getting ready to break out one way or the other. Uh, we were talking about uh, the semis out here, another breakout on light volume for micro semi. Uh, this one's starting to pull back a little bit. Got some more news from uh, some of the Taiwanese sources I look at. Almost all of them say that uh, orders are down a bit, not falling off the edge of the earth, but uh, we shouldn't look for very strong numbers out of Silicon Valley come for the next couple of months. Motorola Solutions, uh, as we said, this one was testing its high on half the volume. If you go back to April, four seventy-six dollars eighty-three cents, two point two point one million shares compared to the one point one million shares. Um, you know what? This one, I would have liked the energy just a little bit more to fall out on this June twenty-seventh low to the current high. Uh, but you can also go back here and look at the January twentieth low to the April fourth high and see just how much energy was in that one. So uh, could this pull back? It could to about 70 bucks. I still think that there are a lot of stocks out here uh, on, with low-hanging fruit. Um, one that I'd be short right now if they didn't have earnings coming on Tuesday would be Palo Alto Networks. This one really sets up the way that I like it. Uh, unfortunately, earnings are on Tuesday, so I'm not going to throw the dice on this one. But uh, I do kind of like the setup on this thing. It gapped down with heavy energy back on the 27th of May. It's back up here uh, on 2 million shares. So, you know, what do you got? 11.7 .7 million shares to 2 million shares tells you just about everything you need to know. Um, you know, this 114.64 has not been tested. Uh, that's pretty nice trading range back in this one. Uh, but again, who knows? Maybe they come out with nice happy words talking about rainbows and butterflies on their earnings call it may not be right but man the chart looks ugly private bank corp uh, this thing eh, i don't know if there's a whole lot in that uh, trox uh been watching this to see if this thing could break out uh but it is not uh volume's going to be light 1.1 million shares into the 3.4 million shares anyway as i said before leaving on vacation tomorrow We'll be back the 6th or 7th, something like that. If, uh, if they can find me, uh, I will be back. Uh, newsletters will continue as always. Uh, TFNN hosts never sleep. In the meantime, so when you can, not when you have to, hang on for the one and only Tom O'Brien and then our friend Andy Heck for his bi-weekly commodities talk. See you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.